Hi, this is Chef Dave Bishop from the Chef to You. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'd like to show you how to make a savory culture style meatloaf. Let's take a look at our ingredients and get started. We'll start out with two pounds of lean ground beef. This is 94% lean. One half cup of oatmeal. Three fresh eggs. A tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Half a teaspoon of salt. One cup of finely diced onions. What I did here is I've already sauteed these with a little bit of butter and a little bit of salt and pepper on top of them. Just gives a, a richer flavor inside your meatloaf. Teaspoon of granulated garlic, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, one half cup of milk, and four slices of bread. Today I'll be using uh, some potato bread. Let's go ahead and uh, start mixing things up. I've already broke up three pieces of bread ahead of time. What you want to do is just break your bread up. Don't squeeze it because we're going to add some milk on it in just a minute and we want to be able to dissolve this bread into that milk. Use any type of bread you like, a white bread or a wheat bread. We're going to pour this milk over the top. This is a half a cup. Depends on the bread and how dry it is. Um, sometimes you may have to add just a little bit more milk. We want to break this up almost like a baby food. Uh, we don't want any chunks of bread left. It's going to dissolve right into the ground beef and you won't even see it uh, when you cut the finished uh, cooked meatloaf. See we're nice and uh, dissolved here, nice and uh, smooth texture. Let's go ahead and grab our ground beef and put our seasonings in. We got our two pounds of ground beef. We're going to add those uh, mashed bread, our three eggs, our half cup of oatmeal, tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. If you don't have Worcestershire, a tablespoon or two tablespoons of steak sauce works real good. Our sauteed, finely diced onions, our half teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of black pepper, and one teaspoon of granulated garlic. If you notice, I haven't mixed this yet. I didn't add an ingredient and mix it, add an ingredient and mix it. Really important when you're making anything that uh, as a ground meat, uh, like for meatballs, Salisbury steak, or meatloaf. And it also goes true for potato salad, chicken salad, tuna salad. You don't want to overmix to break down your meat. And when you have a raw meat like this, what happens is the protein and the fat, when you overmix, make your meatloaf tough and it's not a nice tender meatloaf. So let's go ahead and by hand, we're going to mix this just until it's incorporated. We're almost there. I'm going to mix it just a few more times to make sure that oatmeal and that bread is dissolved in it really well. Alright, that looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, bring our pan over and we'll go ahead and shape this up. I'm going to semi try to shape this meatloaf into a long loaf in the pan first and I'm going to flip it over onto our sheet pan here. Let's take it and just flip it over onto our sheet pan. Now we'll go ahead and shape this. I want this maybe about four inches wide. And this meatloaf right here will feed about eight people, two pounds, um, six to eight people, depending on how hungry they are or if we have something else on the table. As I tell my uh, workers and my students, when you're making a meatloaf, you want every one of these, uh, um, you want it shaped perfectly so from the first slice to the last slice, everybody gets the same size slice. So we want a nice uniformity to our meatloaf, a nice thickness. All right, we're looking pretty good there. Next thing I do is I take my meatloaf. You see some cracks right there. Um, what I do is bring this glass of water over here. We don't want to wet it down too much. We just take a little bit, put it on top. We're going to rub this meatloaf so it's nice and smooth. We may have to do a little bit of reshaping after we rub it down. This will help from cracks forming on your meatloaf if you don't see them ahead of time. So rub them down in there. Again, try not to get too wet. All right, looking 
prettier. A little bit on this way so we get the thickness the same all the way across. We got a nice uniform meatloaf here. We're going to put it in a preheated 350 degree oven for 40 to 45 minutes. Our meatloaf is done. Nice color around it. Right now it's kind of a plain look to it, but we're going to add a gravy to it in just a minute. We have a couple cracks in it, and that's going to happen. You got a nice firmness. It's done on the inside. You can, if you want to, get a uh, quick read thermometer and insert that. You want at least 165. Then definitely know there's no more pink left inside of there. Another thing you can do is you can take and cut it in half and spread it and look inside. If you get any kind of pink at all, put it back in there for uh, the amount of time you need to get uh, all the pink and make sure it's completely done. Again, 40-45 minutes depending on your oven, it should be done. We need to let this stand for at least 10 to 15 minutes, let that meat uh, firm back up. If not, it's going to crumble on us. Let's go and give that 10 to 15 minutes. We'll cut a few pieces, put it on a platter, and take a look at it. I went ahead and cut and took the presentation piece off of here. You see a nice uh, dark brown, no red at all, good savory. You see good juice is still in it. We want to go ahead and cut these about three quarter inch thick slices using a sharp knife. I save a country meatloaf finished and I got it on a nice presentation plate. I got some uh, brown onion gravy right here. Send this to the table just like it is. Before we do that, let's take some more brown onion gravy. Lay a little right across the top. Isn't that beautiful? Let's take a little more parsley. Presentation, presentation, presentation. Let's take a look at a plated meal. We got two slices of our savory country style meatloaf with some good brown onion gravy over it, some fresh mashed potatoes, some nice bright green fresh steamed broccoli. This is Chef Dave Bishop cooking and teaching. Until next time, may God bless.